medical billing is a lot of times something so foreign to a dental office that you really need a coach to come in and help you is, is there, is there a lot of myths and, and people that have tried and failed and, um, uh, because that's what I've heard about medical billing is, oh, don't, don't even bother because it's, you're, you know, you're just wasting your time. Is that a big myth? It's a huge myth. It does work. But again, uh, and I get those clients all the time. I mean, I just started one two weeks ago um, and actually a week and a half technically. And, you know, he pulled when I was there on Friday, he pulls out a book and it's from 2016 or something like that. And he's like, I've been going to courses since even before that time. And he's reached out to me in the past, but he finally decided to make a change and actually move it forward. And um, we literally have about $6,000 in pending payments for him out of that's, that's um, two claims, two claims, $6,000 payments coming um, that are pending processing. And they've already told us that they're paying for it. So, you know, I mean, think about how many claims you have to submit on the dental side in order to get to $6,000. And not only that, patients don't have that kind of money available to them on a dental benefit. Right. I mean, this this client was into $1,500. So this client that you mentioned was, is that, was that considered retro billing? Yeah. So I know you and I chatted briefly about that. I typically start out with retro billing with a practice because um, it's a great opportunity for whoever is is doing the billing in the practice to learn quickly. Um, You've already been paid on it. But what about if you are in network with dental and that claim went to dental and you had to write off 30 or 40 percent? Let's go after that for medical. Let's close that gap of those write-offs that we have in dental Um, because it's, that's, I mean, I've seen as much as 50% write-off on a dental claim. Let's go after that with medical because I know patients have the benefits for many of the things that we do in a practice. So um, yeah, I love to retro bill. I love to collect on, on services that have already been rendered and have, you've had a write-off or great marketing opportunity. A patient gets a reimbursement from you. When you can hand back a patient a bunch of money, are they going to be singing your praises? We work so hard. We work so hard to get new patients in our practice. And this opens up a whole nother door. How many people don't have dental benefits and they're brainwashed by dental, just like we are in often in some realms that they can't come to you because they don't have dental benefits. And so they don't know how they're going to pay for your services. Um, What if you could market that you could do an evaluation for patients so that they could, they could at least have an evaluation and then you just wow them when you get them into your practice and you know, you, you, you figure out an in-house plan for them or whatever it is that they need, but there are people dying. There are people dying from oral infection and you know, they, they end up going to an ER because they don't know where else to go. And they know the ER will take them and will take their medical insurance, but the ER is only going to refer them to a dentist because most ERs do not have a dental professional on staff. And, um, that patient doesn't go to the dentist and they come back to the ER and they potentially have a stroke, heart attack, or they die. And I, I know that for a fact, because I have a friend that's a transplant nurse and, you know, she sees the end results of that. And she said, you cannot imagine how often that happens. So what if we could serve more patients, new patients, we could get new patients by, by marketing that we can see them if they have medical. Um, what a great opportunity. We work so hard to get new patients. And this is just a no brainer when it comes to medical, because the patients that you're billing for in your practice already are going to be singing your praises. And there's very few dentists that are doing this. So who's going to, you know, if patient needs to have treatment, they're going to choose you over another provider in your area because you can bill medical. So yeah, it's such a, such a great way to stand out and, and to get, you know, new patients and referrals. And, you know, if you, like you mentioned, if you 
are reimbursing a patient, they're for sure going to recommend you to their, their friends and family. Yeah. Um, that's such a great point. Now, uh, it sounds like from, from what you're saying that we can bill both dental and medical. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, you can bill both medical and dental. And the, the caveat to that is you can't keep a penny more than what you build. So, you know, if there's an overage between what medical, dental paid, maybe even the patient, you can't keep anything over, over the billed amount. That would be double dipping. But it is not double dipping to access benefits from both medical and dental. Um, the patient ha has benefits, they're paying for two different policies and we can build to both. We're one of the only specialties that can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, we are the only specialty that can do that. So why wouldn't we? It'd be no different than if you get in an auto accident and you're paying for auto insurance and medical. Everything's gonna go through your auto insurance first and then secondarily, it's gonna go to medical. 